Good morning, Auburn High School families. Uh, Jeff Gardner. It is uh, Friday, September 17th. Just want to give you a quick update on how the week's gone. It's Friday morning right now. We haven't had really Friday at school. I also want to just recognize that it is September is National Hispanic Latinx Heritage Month. So we're pumping out a lot of good information through teachers, probably mainly through social studies, maybe language arts, and then also around the school, making sure that our students recognize culturally that uh, this is an important month for a lot of Americans, especially our Spanish, uh, uh, Hispanic, uh, Latinx Americans. So anyway, a little bit about that. I want to thank you. Well, hang on a second. I'm going to take my mask off. Um, I get so used to wearing this around the building. Um, I want to thank all the families that showed up to open house. Uh, Earlier this week, uh, we probably had our best um, turnout uh, in recent years. Um, this is my fifth year here. We had over 300 parents, guardians. Um, usually we're between 100 and 200, you know, in, in person. Last year, virtual was a little bit different. We really didn't get a real collective count. But thank you for being there. That's the main thing. Um, I wanted to touch on a few things. Um, I'm going to keep these up probably for the month of September and then kind of back off to maybe something like every other uh, month, but I'll do it weekly, at least for this first month. I think it's important to help us um, establish smooth operating procedures at school. Um, looking back, uh, transportation has been a little bit of a challenge. Our bus drivers, many of them are new. Uh, you probably already realize we have a bus driver shortage. So if you know anybody out there that's looking for a good job um, and has, uh, you know, wants to work with students um, in, in really, really cool ways. Some of our bus drivers have been some of the best professionals I've ever met in terms of taking care of kids. Um, there are opportunities there. But anyway, um, we've let the school out 10 minutes early, the first three, four days of school, and then five minutes early up until yesterday. Um, just so they can get into routines, the students could. We have probably more kids taking the bus this year than any other year, so I'm glad we did that. Yesterday, we dismissed at 2.40, right at our regular time, and the kids did a great job. We kind of tell them at lunch, tell them in the mornings on announcements, hey, today's the real deal. You got to feel like it's a little bit of a drill. You got to get to your places and get to your buses. We've had a few kids miss buses, and I don't know why that is because some of those buses are the later buses. I think maybe the kids get into socializing and and just you know don't keep track. So if you could just remind your student to make sure they know their bus, where it loads. Um, they've been very consistent each day, the buses have. So I think we're doing a better job with that. Um, I wanna speak a little bit about COVID. Um, you know, you all know too much probably about the Delta variant. Um, hoping it hasn't hit your household and families and your circles um, very hard. Um, but it has uh, pretty much touched everybody that I've talked to. It's real. We take it as real. And at the same time, um, we're trying to create as much normalcy in our building as possible, yet still understanding we're, we're working with the deadly virus, that we're doing everything we can to minimize and keep it out of our school. Um, so we're asking students um, to make sure you're masked at all times. Um, you know, the earliest guidance was we can take them off when we're outside, but then, you know, the, the next guidance came out, well, if you're in stadiums or collective areas of 500 or more, then you have to wear them like at tonight's football game. And I think we've just adopted, we're just gonna wear them whenever we're on campus. We do see a few kids out at the bus stop with their masks off. Um, that's not against the guidance, but my preference would be they keep it on while they're on campus because they're gonna have to put it right back on when they get on the bus anyway. But Overall, they're doing a really great job. Sometimes I'll walk down the halls and I'll see kids with their masks on and it's kind of like this. And I'll, if I get eye contact with them, I'll kind of go like that and they'll go like this. They know, the kids know. So if you can reinforce at home, keep the nose covered too, unless they can plug their nostrils up. But you know, that's, that's another situation there. Um, we do know the virus is spread through, you know, exhaling and inhaling. So the masks are a really great um, layer of support. Also, if students aren't feeling well and have any of those symptoms, um, any particular morning, they really do need to stay home. We've had kids tell us they've kind of got those symptoms coming on. Um, during the day, we take them right to the nurse's office or send them there. Usually they're feeling pretty good other than they might feel a little nauseous or you know, 
maybe not uh, feeling like maybe they have a sore throat or something like that, but we make sure they get checked out. And then we don't know how many kids aren't telling us if they're feeling that way. But I can say this, as long as they're wearing their masks and they're following our distance guidelines, they're going to be all right. Hallways are a little bit crowded, of course, but we're moving, you know, we're moving in all directions. The kids are staying really a good job, staying on the right side of the green line and just being really courteous with each other as they get to those really heavy intersections. Um, we did make one adjustment. We told some of the kids make a different route. If you're in the upper part of the building, take the east and west stairwell so the main stairwell doesn't get so clogged. That seems to have helped alleviate a lot of the crowdedness. So I think that's coming along pretty well. At lunches, I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, the kids are supposed to be scanning QR codes um, with their phones. And the good thing is if they forget their phone or don't have a phone, their friends sitting next to them can scan for them. It took me about 45 seconds to do it. I'd say the average teenager can get it done in 20 to 30 seconds. They're that fast with their phones, but we're not doing very well, okay? Can you imagine a, a commons area and a courtyard area over 500 to 600 kids at a lunch and you have three or four administrators trying to get them to, to do their QR coding? Um, I showed the kids data yesterday and each of the lunches out of 500 kids, we have just over maybe 100, 150 kids who've scanned in uh, on any given day. That's not good enough. OK, we need to have all the kids scan in. Um, the next step we'll go to is doing assigned seats at lunches, which the kids kind of fall into that anyway. They kind of get used to sitting by certain friends and they're kind of doing a self assign. So that's probably going to be the next step. We're not going to say you have to sit here. You have to sit there. We're going to say find a spot you're comfortable at and that's where you, you got to stay you know that's going to help the contact tracing too what we worry about is if we do get trade we do get contacts contracts of uh COVID in the building that we can isolate it to certain parts of the commons you know you have to be in proximity of someone if, if you're someone who's going to be kind of someone we need to let know um you need to check your symptoms things like that or maybe even get a COVID test so if you could help us with that reinforce that at home that'd be awesome um Students are doing great. Uh, they're doing a great job cleaning up after themselves in the lunchroom, starting to notice a little bit of trash in some of the outlying areas where we let them go have a quiet lunch. So if you can talk to your students about keeping the school clean, we don't want uh, cockroaches in the building. We don't want rodents in the building. Um, and, and we have a very small custodial staff that works really hard, but sometimes they miss some spots because we're letting the kids virtually eat anywhere in the building. So really talk to your kids about keep the building clean okay because that's going to keep us um, you know pest safe and it just makes our building look more beautiful we, we want to make sure kids are helping us with that and overall they are um, you may know that uh, if you're a student i think we had 65 students have to have schedule changes and out of 1750 students that's still impactful to those kids um, our counselors endeavor to keep them with the same teachers as much as possible although the periods may have to change but we really had to balance out classes it's not fair to the kids it's not fair to the teacher that in a math class they have 38 students where we're really supposed to only have 30 or less okay so if your student was one of those students that ended up getting that um, please be supportive and um, just tell your students it's going to work out and we get it okay our teachers have done a great job building relationships with kids really quick and uh, of course the kids are building relationships too and then I, I, like i said our counselors are doing a great job making sure they keep them with the same teacher and they also try to preserve the students lunch as much as possible keeping them in a lunch b lunch or c lunch okay i think that's it for now um skateboards uh, a lot of kids are skating these days skating to school skating home from school Got a few that were trying to skate on campus and they're very respectful. We told them don't do it, but we just don't want those skateboards in the hallways during the school day. So we've told the kids all week and we start enforcing it today on Friday. You have to put your skateboards away. You can check out a hallway locker. Go see Mrs. Skill in the activities office. She'll check one out for you. Doesn't work so well for longboards because our lockers are only about three feet long and longboards tend to be three and a half, four feet long. So. We do have a, a locking skate rack out in our west courtyard that kids use. They just need a padlock, their own padlock, and they can lock it up. Some of our students, I know they've talked to teachers, maybe office um, staff to put their boards away. Um, and that's really up to each professional. I'm not going to do that in my office. I just 
can't guarantee I'm going to be able to get it for them at the end of the day. So if we do see them in the hallways, we're going to confiscate. We're going to take it down to the attendance office. The kids can pick it up at the end of the day. But we really need them to be self-sufficient. We need them to be responsible and secure their own boards. Uh, we're glad they're riding them to school safely and home. Um, if it happens a second time, you'll be getting a phone call from an administrator that we're going to need the parent or guardian to come pick, up, pick it up. And then we'll have to problem solve how we're going to take care of that. So anyway, that's the latest at the high school. We have a football game tonight against Auburn Riverside. If you're coming to the game, kids are doing a whiteout. They're wearing white sweatshirts, t-shirts, and we're going to show a little bit of school solidarity. It's, we're off to a good start. And like I said, I'll do weekly until the end of the month of September. And then I'll probably back off to like once a month. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Appreciate all your support. Take care.